Bay. So I call uh, Dr Shane Reddy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise and speak on behalf of this bill and to speak in support of this bill, which effectively makes cervical screening in the register a better tool. Why does it do that? How does it do that? It allows cervical smear takers to eventually take up electronic lookup and to access the cervical screening register. Now, why is that important? Well, I think it's important if we can understand the workflow of what happens when you take a smear. And I think what's important here is the uh, minister, when she first introduced it, she said that the cervical screening history was most important so that you didn't overscreen. I want to contest that. That's not actually the most important reason. When a woman comes in for a smear, you want to know their cervical history beforehand, not so you overscreen them, but because it changes the way you do the smear. Now, most of the time, you'd use a spatula, which is like a little sort of ice block stick, if you like. But if a person has had an abnormal smear history, you actually are going to change it. You might still use a spatula, but you're actually going to also use a brush, just sort of like a little toothbrush, if you like, because if that, you're sorry to be so anatomical here, but it's important to sort of note that the real part of the history, it changes what you do. It gives you a more effective result if you know that something was amiss. Furthermore, when you're doing what you're doing, sometimes you don't see what you expect to see and you think, oh goodness, this isn't so good, I need to do something urgent. For example, if there's scarring. But if you know from their history that they've had a colposcopy, it's totally explainable. That's why they've got scarring and you can proceed as normal. So I think it's very important to know that the reason that we want the cervical history is because it changes what you do in the moment. OK, so how do you go about getting that history at the moment? Well, you call the local DHB coordinator, and he or she then calls the coordinator, and um, they look it up. And I understand, as I've been speaking with them over the past few days, they're happy if you're authenticated to give you a verbal result. That's a good thing you can, uh, one can proceed. Um, if not, what they'll then do is fax it to you, as was mentioned. Now, it's been explained to me that sometimes a cervical smear history can be 20 pages long, and they're doing dozens of these a day. You can see the cumbersome sort of process that this entails. When I uh, spoke to the registry coordinator here in Wellington, she said that this is a common occurrence across a number of DHB coordinated cervical smear coordinators. So clear efficiency gains here. What's broken in the current Act? Section 112J is what's broken. It wasn't clear around disclosure in the Act when it was first created. So this new legislation meets current privacy codes. It meets the Privacy Act 1993. More specifically, it deals to access, it deals to use and retention, and it also deals to disclosure. Now, when we pass this bill, as has been noted, efficiency will improve, but the real efficiency is getting the electronic lookup for a smear taker, to be able to go straight there without going through coordinators. Now, there are some problems associated with that at the moment, because the cervical square register is an old register. It was actually formed in 1990, and if we go back as to why, as has already been mentioned, it comes out of the Cartwright Inquiry 1988 and the screening register was established in 1990. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because you can't do lookup today because it's old technology. From your GP desk, you can't do direct lookup into the cervical screening register. Now, from what I understand, the hope is that the bowel screening engine, the platform to that, is actually going to have the cervical screening register embedded into it. So you will be able to do direct lookup. And then I think we'll have the maximum efficiencies that this act is entailing. So it's a good act, I'm very pleased to support it. I think our colleagues who are smear takers will be very pleased with the efficiencies that this entails. It is primarily procedural, not clear to me why it's not in an omnibus bill, but maybe the uh, government can speak to that. Either way, it is a good piece of legislation and uh, I commend it to the House. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable David Clark. Thank you, Madam Speaker.